and welcome tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, peer group alchemy and what that means for you because we've been given a very interesting opportunity with this whole COVID-19 thing and people see that of course is a bad thing and social distancing as a very big inconvenience inconvenience in our everyday life. But if you think about it, it's probably the biggest reset for our lives that we've had in society since the end of the Second World War. Okay, so what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. Okay, in the post COVID era. So those of you that have been with me during the uh, other podcasts and uh, webinars, you're going to remember that we talk about the up, down, inside out model of being. And what that means is that, you know, we have our, our highest goals and ambitions, our idea of who we want to be, who our highest self is. We have the thoughts that bring that to our awareness. We supercharge that with the emotions of a full and open heart. And then we create the action plan and and fulfill the actions that are needed for us to be successful, right? So it's up, down, from the inside, our highest dreams and ambitions, ma ambitions making that real in the outside world, okay? So very often we are looking around us to Instagram or to the movies, to who we're gonna be, how are we gonna be? You know, you look at people who haven't really found themselves and found their own personalities and they're trying to be Superman or they're trying to be a gangster or they're trying to be a rap artist where, you know, maybe they live in the middle of Iowa and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but probably that's not the gangster neighborhood that these guys are living in and probably doesn't work out so well for you, you know? So the idea is that society doesn't need to tell us who we are. We tell society who we are, but in order to do that, we have to be integrated. And we've been working a little bit on that piece by piece. And now what I want to do is to take it to the next level, which is we've worked on personal skills. Like for example, the, the very first one, we talked about thank thankfulness and, and gratefulness and how to really supercharge and magnetize our life to bring the things that we want into our lives through that emotional energy. And then we talked about our own recovery skills, the resets that we have. You know, meaning that if you are working hard, for example, in my case, I work with patients and perhaps I have a very heavy patient who just lost their husband or has lost their job and they have a very heavy energy. I don't want to take that energy with me into the next room. I want to reset myself with the green button technique or the sound bite of success or any of these things like taking the wind, those three techniques that we talked about. And if you don't remember these techniques, you probably weren't at that webinar. And I encourage you to go back and, and look at them at the integrated human website because they're there for free. So go back and watch them and this will make a lot more sense, right? So you also have to think about, you know, the, the rules that you want to play by are often also defined by the roles you play in your life. And that was, last month's webinar. What roles are you playing in your life and whether or not you're really filling up your role? Are you walking into your role as an office worker or as a husband or as an athlete as much as you can? Or are you not really uh, standing for what you want in your life? You know, And also not identifying with your roles, being able to take off the role that you're playing perhaps as a CEO you know, if you're a CEO of a business and you come home and you have two wonderful blonde little uh, twin girls that are four years old and you try to run them around like employees, how well is that going to work for you? Not very well, right? So I'm just reminding you of all the work that you've been doing coming to the webinars and the, and the skills that you've been acquiring. And again, if you need a refresher, go to the website and watch them. Um, so as we move through our up down inside out model there's something that we have connected each one of these webinars with and that is awareness now one of my favorite russian uh, philosophers 
uh, Gurdjieff says that the first thing you need to know in order to escape prison is to know that you're in prison, right? So the first step of changing anything for the better is to realize that it could be better, right? How conscious are we actually about the people that we let into our lives? Now, give me, give me, give me um, a hands up because I can see all of you lovely people. Please give me a hand up if you have consciously chosen your friends. Very good. Have you consciously chosen the team that you work with every single day in order to achieve your major goals? And the next step is, have you consciously chosen your peer group? Right now, many of us may not want know the difference between a friend, a team and a peer group. And we're going to talk about that in its healthiest version right now. OK, so. Many people say, well, my friends are the people I hang out with. Well, not really, because some of the people you hang out with are positive and some of them are not as positive. Right. So if the people you're hanging out with drain you or encourage you to do things that aren't at the same frequency as your highest roles and ambition, are they actually your friend? No. Friends love and support you, or they should love and support you, shouldn't they? If they are not loving and supporting you, then you can't define them as friends. If they're people who just depend on you or just take from you, it's not that there shouldn't be a give and take, but if you find that the relationship is depleting you and never supporting you, that's actually not a friend. So I want us to, first of all, be conscious of who you hang out with every single day. Are there people that create a positive influence on you or not, right? The next level of this is your team. Now, a team is different than your friends, your friends you hang out with. Your team is somebody or a group of people that you cooperate with to achieve a specific goal. For example, world championship, for example, um, gold medal in the Olympics and volleyball, uh, for example, um, a successful business. That is your team. Now, what is the difference between a team member and a friend? If you think about it, your team members generally are chosen because they have a specific set of skills that support your movement in a specific direction right? But it's a direction really in the outside world. It's a direction in relationship to achieving a specific goal. Does it make sense? So if we're taking, uh, for example, um, Petter Nortug, who's a great Norwegian skier, he has a team of 20 people who help him become the best in the world in skiing. Now, all of these people have the same singular goal, which is for him to win the Olympics in skiing. Does that make sense? Not everybody's trying to ski, which means that there's not really competition in between those members. It's not like a, 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 a group of lions uh, fighting over scraps to see who's going to get the most scraps. You have a person who's waxing the skis so that Petra can win. You have a person who's making sure that the poles are stable so that Petra can win. You have a person who is um, making sure that the clothing that he has is appropriate for the weather so that he can win. You have a person who makes sure that he has the, enough calories and balances nutrition so that he can win, right? You have all of these different people who have different skills. Now, a peer group is completely different. A peer group is completely different. Now, we talk about what our highest goals and ambitions are, our highest self. This is the person that you aspire to be that you're working towards. Does it make sense? If you're living your ultimate dream and you have a state of clear mind, a heart that's completely open and filled with unconditional love and a body that can respond, 
then you don't have to worry about your peer group because you don't have one. <laughs> in this crazy world that we live in where things in general are, are catch as catch can, basically, we very often don't have an opportunity to completely live out our highest goals and ambitions and our highest self every single day. We need a reminder about who that is so that we can attune ourselves to that space. Do you sometimes, and please raise your hand, do you ever find yourself doing something that's beneath your highest goals and ambitions? Right? And do we have behaviors that sometimes take us away from the way we really want to see ourselves and the way we really want to be? Yeah, we do, right? Everybody does. And that's the point, because if you had achieved that thing, then it's not your highest goal and ambition anymore. It's just being this and you basically it's game over for you. This is a process of evolution, right? And as soon as you reach one peak, what do you generally see behind that again? The next peak, right? You just keep working on yourself and developing yourself. And that's why this world is so beautiful. Now, one thing that the people in your peer group have to have is an abundance of whatever you need to remind yourself about your highest self and your highest goals. So what does that mean? So um, I'm, I come into work, I'm, I'm, I'm just broke, I'm broken. I've been training too much. I've, I'm, you know, I'm working towards a, a competition and I'm maybe losing weight and you know i'm just not feeling fresh <laughs> and i any of you that are competitors you understand this state you're just not feeling fresh and i know that i have a big day in the clinic i'm i walk in i didn't feed myself because i know that i can't afford the calories right now because i'm cutting weight and all this stuff and i and I, it's i'm living my highest goals and ambitions but i also in my highest goals and ambitions am a very loving attentive present chiropractor so I walk in and regardless of how she's feeling or what's up, Maudit's like, hey, are you ready? And I'm like, uh, I guess, no, are you ready? You ready to take it? Let's go. We're going to get it right. We have a big day. Don't be late, man. I want to see people happy. You know, she has an, ab an abundance of moving herself in the positive direction and making it happen for herself regardless of whatever she came in with, she does the job. So that inspires me frequency wise to find that in myself. So I have colleagues that remind myself of what I want. I look at, I look at Steve, my wife, she doesn't go to work guys. She goes to office joy, right? So when she goes to office joy, do you think that that inspires me to find my open heart and love people regardless of how hungry I am. Yeah, it does. And because life is, is complicated because life is multifaceted, we need people to remind us about who we want to be and what we want to be. Now, am I lucky? that I have two people in the office every single day that help me remind myself of my highest goals and ambitions, or am I, is it a coincidence? What do you think? Coincidence, raise your hand. Done on purpose, raise the other hand, right? <laughs> I'm very fortunate. I'm a very fortunate person because, because I strive to be the highest version of myself, and serve people at the highest possible level that I can, I'm also both lucky and fortunate enough to attract people who are at that same frequency. You know, and I don't want to get too esoteric with this, but it's a fact that like attracts like. If I'm a high frequency person, I'm going to not accept people that are low frequency. And I'm going to notice when I'm looking for my own evolution, I'm going to notice the people that sparkle. I'm going to notice the people that inspire me to be better. But first, I have to know who I am, who what I want. What are the values? What are the, the frequency of vibration that I want to live at so that I can resonate with those people, right? Now, 
how many people can you have in your peer group? What do you think? Two, ten, a hundred, a thousand. IDEX has five. One, right? How many do you, how, how, how many can you have in there? The secret is as many as you need, right? Very often you'll notice that one, two, three, four, five are enough, right? But as many as you need. And what does that mean? Now, because the world has become completely microscopic with, you know, the invention of the internet, we are a completely connected race of people now. Uh, you can make distance zero. You can find people who have that frequency, who speak and act and love at the frequency that you would like to be at that inspire you on the net. You can pull people in, but the closest people to you, the people that you pay the most attention to, if you're fortunate, are going to also be those strongest resonators or those people who are inspiring you. So my question to you is, do you think social distancing is the best possible opportunity that you've ever had to re-choose your friends, your teams, and your peer group? Absolutely, positively. This is the best possible thing that has happened because it's the reset that gives you the, the excuse, not just the excuse, the opportunity to take a step back and distance yourself from the people who you consider to be friends that maybe don't support your, your lifestyle and your dreams, to choose a different team to move forward with, and to really consciously choose your peer group. Now, I can see all of you. you I would like you to do me a, a, good, uh, a little bit of a favor. I would like you to raise your hand and show me how many people that you physically meet every single day that inspire you to be better, that inspire you to be your higher self. Excellent. And I hope that at least one of the fingers that you raised included yourself. Did it? Yeah, right? Now, this is the point. Because the most important thing to understand here is that bringing attention to the fact that you want to move forward is the most powerful tool that you have. Remember what Gurdjieff said? He said that the first thing you need to know in order to get out of prison is that you're in a prison, right? The person that's closest to you is you, and you should know that you want to be better. And if you get good, if you get better, then be even better, right? Because it's that internal process of you constantly looking for a higher, a higher frequency, a better way of being, and how to use even more of your potential that's going to move you forward. Because you can be sitting right next to the most inspiring person in the world and not be inspired, can't you? Have you ever put a motivational video on and not been impressed at all? Have you ever been super impressed by that amazing video and then three or four months later when you're in the dumps and you kind of are like washing dishes or playing a video game and you have it going next to you and you don't react, you don't get an emotional charge at all out of it? Has it ever happened to you? Of course it has right? Because we have to be receptive for the people around us. We have to be ready. Now, here's a strange question. Is it better to be loved or to feel love for everybody else? Would you rather feel love for everything and everybody around you or would you rather be loved by the people around you and there's a hint if you don't know has anybody ever loved you hashtag your mom and you couldn't feel it 
and you were frustrated and feel all alone in the world, even though you had a hundred people around you who would love you? Absolutely. And have you ever been in love? What feels better? What is better? What makes you happiest? What makes you most creative? Right? And weirdly enough, if you feel love for other people, over time, they start to love you too. Now, the same thing is true with inspiration because inspiration is also a kind of love. It's a frequency of love. It's, a, it's the love of something higher. You know, the Latin base of inspiration is breath or a vital breath, vitality, life. So, again, please raise your hand and show me how many people you have contact with every single day that inspire you to be better. Show me the number and I hope it's more, at least one more, right, than it had before. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. That's awesome. So now there's another thing that I wanted to share with you. And this is also a very important thing because though we have the internet, it is not always easy to find people who live after our highest values does that do you understand what i mean like you know you look on the internet maybe they're really good at making money for example but you're not really a money person you you would like to have money but they're all about the money and that okay there's some good things about that some bad things about that so you can be kind of ambivalent about your relationship with people who are supposed to be inspiring you right maybe this person's all about the love but they're not successful anywhere else in their life right and you kind of have an issue with dealing with them as a person, though they have some good qualities, right? Life is rife with, with paradoxes and dualities and difficulties understanding others. So sometimes it's hard to find people that you can bring into your life, bring into your mind that you can consistently depend on to, to raise your level. So we're going to talk about one of the biggest coaching tools that you can also use to pick out your peer group and be powerful. Are you ready? This is called the glimpse of brilliance. And it is probably the strongest tool for communication and reception of energy that you possibly can have. And what does that mean? The glimpse of brilliance is the way I coach. And that means, and it's also the way I treat patients, by the way, I communicate with patients. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. I don't care how you're dressed. I always look immediately for what is brilliant about you as a person or about the way you are. So, I had a guy that came in uh, and this guy was, he was sick and he was horrible in his way of behaving. He was making fun of babies in the waiting room and he was rude to moms. And, you know, I thought he was going to pick a fight on the way into to my treatment room. And I had a hard time really finding the love in my heart for this person. Does it make sense? So what I did was I looked for the glimpse of brilliance. And what I realized was this guy is probably the most fantastically negative person that I've ever met in my whole life. It is amazing. Like this guy is, he's like the Einstein of negativity. This is, it's, 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 it's fascinating. I would throw him a compliment and see what he did with it. You know, I would say something interesting for me and see what he did with it. The guy was a genius. He would turn everything into an insult, everything into a reason to fight and everything into a reason to not cooperate. It was brilliant, right? And that way, I was able to keep my light tone and keep my eyes focused on something that was at my highest goals and ambitions. Because if I fell down to his level of negativity, I, of course, lose touch of who I wanted to be. So the glimpse of brilliance is what I, I use in order to really connect with a person so that I'm happy, joyous, and strong in my communication with them. So I can accept them as a human being because whatever they do, it's amazing. Look at the smile on that person. Wow. There's the most beautiful teeth I've ever seen in my whole life. Or, whoa, that guy's super tall. I can't wait. Mr. Tall's in the next room, right? 
the glimpse of brilliance can help you sort through your internet videos, your your transformational videos, your motivational videos, and help you find the people who are exhibiting the glimpse of brilliance that you need in order for you to remind yourself of who you are. And I want you then to s surround yourself with that information. So the first thing is to be inspiring to yourself. Look for that movement towards your highest self and your highest ambition. And if you can't find, I've been conscious about this for a long time. So the the closest, the people closest to me are my my, my father and my, my wife and, and Maudet, right? And these people that I see every single day, they inspire me and they remind me of who I want to be. But I've created that environment consciously, guys. So if you haven't worked this consciously, you may not necessarily have people that are holding you to your highest value. So then you have to use the glimpse of brilliance to steal that spark from other sources. And that's how you can go into the internet and go to motivational uh, videos and, and pick that out. Now, like I talked about, have you ever heard a video that inspired you? And then later on, you listen to the same video and it didn't inspire you. Was the video different? It wasn't different. Who was different? Right. And you're different in one of two ways. Either who you want to be has changed or the second important thing has changed. The state with which you're listening to the video. So if I'm listening, looking at something new for the first time, and I'm, I'm receptive and I'm open and I want to, I want to, I want to get something from this. Do you think my ex experience of that's going to be better than if I'm kind of listening to it on the side as I'm uh, cooking dinner and having a conversation with my friend on a speakerphone? Make your moments holy. Make your moments holy. Inspiration is the spark of life. If you're going to take in something that you want to give you the juice of life that wants that you want to inspire you to be the best version of yourself, shouldn't you show up as the best version of yourself that you can be in order to receive it? Yes, you should. So if you're lucky enough to have the peer group around you, they have to have an abundance of a quality that you need in order to live your highest goals and ambitions. Second, they have to be willing to tell you the truth. And the second part of that is you have to be willing to listen to what they say to you and accept it without it being a personal attack. Are you willing to listen to them? Right? Does that make sense at all? And something about them has to express a place that you want to be in the future. Now, does that mean that if I'm an athlete, that my peer group has to only be athletes? Not at all, right? Does it mean that uh, they have to be from the same country as me? Not at all. Do I have to be the same age? No. And do they have to want the same thing? No. But they have to be willing to participate in your life in a truthful way. And they have to not be interested in the outer trappings of life. Like, you know, are you, are you rich? Are you famous? Are you, you know, looking a certain way? Do you dress a certain way? But they have to be rather interested in who you are on the inside. Because who you are determines how well what you do works. Always. Like we talked about in our last webinar, the roles you play are like a glove and you're the hand. So do you fill up, those, do you fill up your role by being the best you or not?